Hello and welcome to another Beard Clipper video. This video shows the state I've managed to reach for the massive lake build that I began on the Battle Games of Middle Earth video a couple of months back now. And yeah, what has happened is I've actually run out of resin, so it's paused for now until I can manage to get some more resin in. What you see being poured is about six litres of the CFS resin and it is really looking amazing. I'm probably going to need to order 10 more, maybe even more, maybe 12 more to finish it off, I think, uh, as the level isn't just getting higher. Um, so we're not just needing to fill the same volume because it's actually becoming a larger area that's needing to be filled, which means at a higher volume. So yeah, it's a big old chunk of resin pour left to go, but uh, from, from the progress so far, I'm very pleased. I can't wait to get it finished, but it's now gonna, probably gonna be a month or two before I manage to pick up any more resin. So yeah, let's go back to the beginning of the pour uh, and you can see how that goes and I hope that you enjoy this video. Now comes a little bit of a moment of truth. What I've got is a little cup of water here and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna run it along the edge and I can mop it up with a towel and just to see if it finds any holes. Because I'd far rather have water dripping on the floor than all my resin running out. So, this here is where I'm most concerned about. Looks to me like it's doing all right so far. Yep, oh, better move my little mermaid. So yes, I think that's gonna be all right. So we'll come along with some toilet paper and just mop that up. Don't think there's any holes I can see there. And uh, yeah, that, hopefully that means that the resin will now will stay in there. I'll be coming to do the resin pour later on today, which I'm very, very excited about. I'm very excited. This evening, I am not too tired to do a resin pour. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix up a relatively large batch, and I'm gonna pour it in the area that I'm focused on now. And as you can see, suspended in a very Heath Robinson way by this strip of XPS and a cocktail stick stuck through and a little bit of blue tack is my mermaid. Now my plan is to pour the resin and then make sure I get enough just so that the bottom of her tail is covered so that she will be supported. Then remove her, get the uh, heater in there and pop all the bubbles and then pop her back in like she is now and then leave her to dry overnight. Uh, and in that way hopefully then I'll be able to take the cocktail stick out, remove all, all of the other accoutrements and then she should stay there and then I'll be able to pour up around her. So it's not going to be a huge pour but it is going to be very, very exciting because this is the next step that I've been wanting to do for several evenings and I've just been too battered really to do it. Uh, the rest of the table actually underneath the river, underneath, underneath the deep part of the lake, I'm relatively happy with. I've got a few more bits and pieces that I might add, so I'm not going to rush the pour. I'm just going to focus on this bit. I've got some skulls and bones and what have you that I might want to put in a few places, but, um, and maybe a little bit more greenery, but I'm really, really happy with how it's looking. So anyway, I'm going to go and mix the, the resin now, and I will pop the camera on when I'm doing the pour. Uh, I probably won't talk probably just speed it up and put some music, but then you'll be able to see the process, including the flames um, and what have you. So um, yeah, next time I, I'm here, uh, I'll probably be running at about 1500 times normal speed or something like that. I've mixed up another batch and I'm about to pour it. Very exciting. I think that now that I've got past this uh, mermaid step, that I should be able to speed up my pouring. I'm hoping that I might be able to do one application a day, maybe even two. But as I get deeper, my pores will get bigger because, yeah, the surface area will increase and therefore the volume will increase. So let's get this mix in. This is about as large a batch as it's possible for me to produce in the size of the containers I have. Can't do much more than this. So as you can see, this is gonna take me a very long time 
and a lot of resin. There we are, that's deep enough there. I might be able to do another pour uh, further over on the on the lake, but I'm gonna go mix it up. I might do, I might not, I'm not sure, I think I will. Um, but I'll let that go off a little bit and then I'll come in with my flamer. Let me just show you how I go about doing that. So I have been doing this, so I'm getting a little bit more practice at this, which is good. So it's just short bursts and it pops all the bubbles really quickly. Don't need to do much. So if you're a little unsure how to go about this, this is how I'm doing it. Now the added complication I have is that I've got all this plastic stuff which is popping up out. <laughs> and so I'm being very careful to not melt it, which is another reason why I'm going in such short bursts. Now the other thing to say is that in an hour or so I'll come back and what I'll find is I'll find that there's probably a lot of bubbles that have come to the surface that I can then do again. So you can't always get them all at once, I've found. Sometimes you have to come back in again. So there we are. That's done quite a lot of the bubbles. Let's uh, leave that for now and I'll come back, as I said, about an hour and do a little bit more. I've decided that yes, I will do another pour. So let's get it done. I've screwed up slightly on this, but I'm going to make it into an opportunity because that's all you can do. This fish here, I kind of sat on the resin last night and then didn't think about it and was a bit of an idiot. And of course it's fallen over because I'm an idiot. However, I have found a awesome Reaper miniature, which is actually a dryad, which is clearly not an underwater creature, but I'll paint her as an underwater creature. And I, she's got a dagger, but I'm going to convert that to have a, a bow and I'll put a little arrow into that and I'll sit her just a little bit further back. So let me zoom out a little bit so you can see the composition. There we are. So she'll sit back somewhere around here in this growth here and then this will have an arrow in it and so it will, the story will be, you'll know because you've watched it but yeah no one else will. Uh, you've watched this video. The story will be that she's just shot herself a fish for supper. So I'm going to save that situation. However, that's not what I brought you here for. So let me just quickly reposition the camera and then I'll get stuck into the next step, which isn't fixing my mistakes. Okay, so I have a pot here, which has a lot of skeletons and other assorted bits. Uh, I'm not going to film the entirety of this process because that would be very boring. However, what I am going to do is I'm going to nestle some skulls and what have you just in this greenery. That's going to act as a counterpoint to the greenery and will also add a little bit more interest as well. So we'll come in with a little bit of PVA. Like so. Blub blub. There we are. And then I've got a wet brush so I can smooth that out a little bit. Like so, you can see some of this greenery is still a little bit a little not fixed in place, which isn't ideal because it might float when the resin reaches it, but that's fine. And now what we'll do is we'll get tweezers and we will position maybe, I don't know, a rib cage. There's a rib cage. There may be a skull. Not that one, that one's got horns. There we are, bit of a skull there bit of a rib cage, and what else have I got? Let's go for the full skelling bone. There's that, and then we have a foot, which can sit up here. So it's gonna be a bit of a jumbled skeleton, but jumbled skeletons are the best kind. So what I'll do is I'll zoom in on that so that you can see it a little easier. There we are, we have our skeleton. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna maybe not use all of these bits. Um, I think they're from Warlord, a Warlord box of skeleton warriors. Uh, I also have some um, swords. I might pop a sword in there. Um, and I have some spears as well that I've painted up. So let's just drop 
the sword in. There we are, that will look good. It's painted copper or bronze even, so it's quite an old sword probably. But yeah, I'm going to dress up a little bit of this because I think this is going to be the final round of water detailing. So once this is done, all I'll be doing is putting more fish in um, at different levels and um, other uh, like swimming animals. Um, but I'll just better continue on with the resin pour much quicker. So let's get this done. Uh, I will bring you back to show you what I've, where I've placed them and what I've done um, uh, when, when I'm finished. I'm going to be able to do another resin pour now and I think that i have probably going to be able to do maybe one a day from now on which will be really cool. I've done a little bit more dressing as you can see the huntress is in and at the back here we've got the, uh, the skeleton uh, next to the kelpies and the horror and if I just uh, do a little pan you can see there I've got a spear which has a skeletal arm on it and that is pointing towards the kelpies. And then the final detail to show you, I'll just do another quick shift. This is actually a real dead frog, which is going to be entombed as part of a of this diorama forevermore. Um, yeah, I found it uh, quite a while ago. We had a rainstorm and then a lot of heat, and unfortunately, this one didn't survive, which is very sad. Um, but I've had it for a while now, and uh, yeah, I've been waiting for some opportunity. So that is going to be coming out there, and that is behind the kelpies. So that's where that is. Uh, that's where that's um, coming towards the front of the board. So what I'm going to do is going to do a mix and do a pour. I'll leave the camera running, but I won't, won't talk. Uh, and you can just see I'm going to do the biggest pour I possibly can because, yeah, I reckon I can really start to do along the front here and have it start to fill up towards the back. I can probably get three centimeters, four centimeters more. All I'll be doing now is arranging fish on top of the resin as it rises so that I can build them into a 3D. Um, but yeah, um, that will be done once it's off so that I don't have another tragedy of it falling on its side. Uh, but yeah, um, I'm gonna get going. So I'll bring you back in a second when I've done the, when done the uh, mixed it together and I'm ready to pour. Pour was a little light because I ran out of my first pot of uh, my first mixes of resin. So that's probably around six or seven hundred, maybe a kilogram of resin on there now. I've got four and a half kilograms in the new batch that I ordered, and it's clearly not going to be enough, so I'm going to have to order some more. But I'm not going to rush it if this takes me uh, a long time. It takes me a long time. I, I can't really afford to just keep buying resin and resin, but that's by the by, I'm now going to do another mix from my new batch, so I'm starting 4.5 kilograms of resin. So when I'm out of that, we know exactly how much I've used. Uh, a little bit of shaky cam for you. First of all, I've been shopping and I've bought myself some new mixing things for my resin, so I'll be able to mix a lot more at once and pour a lot larger quantities. Uh, I've also got some spatulas there, so I should be able to waste less. The second thing to show you, I'll just do a quick pan. I was going to do a pour, but I realised that there was a little bit more dressing that I wanted to do. So first of all, you can see that I've stuck a fish here. I'm just using super glue on top of the resin and I've propped it up. I'm not going to make the same mistake twice. I've also added in one of the mermaids over here which is uh, going to look really good there. Um, I'll just move around to the other side. So on this side I've added another fish down here which is struggling to focus on. There we are. And finally as I pan over and look for it in the viewfinder there's one here. There it is. There's one there. So I've added three fish at this layer. And then finally, on this update, I've added the sticks, the um, drowned 
whatever of the sticks. She's sat in there, tucked in there, and that's exactly where I wanted to go, so I'm very pleased about that. So this means I'm not gonna pour some resin right away. However, I will hopefully pour some resin a bit later on. Those, all that stuff should go off. Um, and if it's not tonight, that'll be first thing tomorrow, and I'll do a, full, a large resin pour with my new um, mixing stuff. And yeah, I'm really, really quite, quite excited. It's been, I've just not had time this week to even look at this. I've been thinking about it a lot and I've finally got a little bit of time. So yeah, hopefully we'll get a big resin pour in either later on today or tomorrow. This is all ready now for the pour. So I'm going to get my new mixers, mix up a load of resin and I will film the pour, which will be happening very, very shortly. Been about an hour or so since I poured that resin and I think I'm going to do another pour. Um, you can see, if I just step over, along here there is quite a pronounced meniscus and I'm a little bit worried that it's going to be quite obvious um, as, um, so, so what I think I might do is pour about the same quantity again if I can and start over this end and attempt to at least get up to the edge completely with at least a millimetre or two of coverage. So that's what I'm going to do, I'm going to do another mix and I will put some music on in a second when I've done that and bring you along for that, uh, for that pour. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> this is really going to take a lot, of, a lot of resin, a lot of resin. That last pour was 800 mil total, so this will be another 800 mil if I get it done. Uh, so that'll be 1.6 litres um, that I've done today and it barely tickled it. So yes, <laughs> this is going to be a big old build. It's been a little while since I've looked at this, mainly uh, due to the fact that we've been having the work done in the games room where this is currently set. And there was lots of dust that was covered in a dust sheet. However, that's now done. I've cleaned up, I've tidied. And uh, you can see I've also finished off my Roman ship, which will be something which will be scattered terrain on here. I just wanted to show that, how well that looks. I think it looks really good. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pour probably all of the rest of the resin which I have available to me. <laughs> so I'm gonna mix it up and I will run the camera while I'm doing that, uh, while I'm doing the pour. Uh, it might take two mixes, I'm not sure, but I'm gonna do them. Um, I'll do one mix. If it needs more than that, then I'll have to come back later. But I'm just gonna get all of the resin down now, let it go off, uh, because then it can be put somewhere or I can do other parts of the detailing until after Christmas when I'm buying more resin. So let's get some pouring done. Well then, there you are, that's a lot of resin and uh, there's a whole lot more to go as well. So thanks for watching very much. I'd love to hear your comments below. Have you ever done epic resin pours like this before? Uh, have you done one that's bigger? Um, or do you think I'm crazy? Just let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. I always reply to everything that uh, anyone sends me. And uh, yeah, um, what do you think? Let me know. I'll close off as I always do by saying please stay healthy, stay safe and stay well.